Hi guys, I am here with your Bible reading. Kelly, I haven't got your videos up yet, um, but I'm going to upload them as soon as I get this Bible video put up everywhere. I'm running late again today. I apologize, guys. And I'm also, I was going to erase this one video. It's only eight seconds long. But for some reason, it wouldn't let me erase it, and I hadn't had problems erasing anything else. I want you guys to listen to it and let me know if you hear something. A male's voice saying something in the background when Sherm's talking. I was not talking, nobody else was here, and the TV was not on. And we can clearly as day hear it. But you, Sherm thinks it's saying one thing, and I think it's saying another. And we're not really sure, and I don't know how to, you know, it sounds like some kind of different language to me. And I don't know the spelling and different words, the way it's spelled differently, um, or showing up different meanings online. And... Yeah, but just let me know what you guys think. I'm not going to get into the whole story. Let's just say I believe in things. Three people know this about me. That's it. I've not told none of my friends. I don't want nobody to think I'm crazy. I haven't even told most of my family. My mom, my aunt, and Sherm knows. That's it. And now you guys are all going to know. I see things. I've seen things for years. And... I can see stuff here in this apartment every day, not just at nighttime. And I, when I see them, sometimes they are in full form, clear as day, just like you were standing here right in front of me. And if I concentrate enough, just sitting here, let my mind, you know, get relaxed, I'll start seeing it right and seeing things right now. But I'm turning my mind off as best I can to not try to deal with it all the time. I would rather not deal with it at all, but it happens. I don't know why it happens to me. People think I'm going to, people are going to think I'm crazy, but Sherm's kind of starting to believe me now after he heard that video. So it's only an eight second video, so if you guys want to see it, it'll be on my YouTube channel under Missy Crabtree, and um, it'll be like the only eight second video on there that's uploaded today so just listen to it if you got eight seconds of your time to give for to watch the video and let me know what you think you hear sure I'm scared to death so he's really encouraging you to I've seen like I said I've seen it so it doesn't bother me as much but Sherm's sure freaked out so just let us know what you guys um what you guys hear if you hear anything really appreciate it and with that being said, I think we all need to hear the Bible reading tonight. 1 John, chapter 5. Reading all of chapter 5. And I'm sorry it's going to be a little bit long because of me blah, 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 at the beginning. <laughs> sorry about that. Faith in the incarnate Son of God. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well, which is Jesus. This is how we know that we love the children of God, by loving God and carrying out his commands. In fact, this is love for God, to keep his commands, and his commands are not burdensome. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Like us, brothers and sisters. This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. He did not come by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who testifies, because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And the three are in agreement. We accept human testimony, but God's testimony is greater because it is the testimony of God which he has given about his Son. 
Jesus. Whoever believes in the Son of God, Jesus, accepts this testimony. Whoever does not believe God has made him out to be a liar because they have not believed the testimony God has given about his Son. So the people who do not believe God and believe that Jesus is Son, they are, they are liars. And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son, which is Jesus Christ. Whoever has the Son, Jesus, has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God, who is Jesus, does not have life. And that is very true, because whoever doesn't believe in Jesus, their life on this earth is just a waste. They're just a waste, because when they're gone, they're gone. That would be the end of them. Concluding affirmations. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. This is the confidence we have in approaching God. But if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we speak, we know that we have what we asked him for. If we see any brother or sister commit a sin that does not lead to death, you should pray and God will give them life. I refer to those whose sin does not lead to death. There is a sin that leads to death. I am not saying that you should not pray about that. All wrongdoing is sin, and there is sin that does not lead to death. Finishing up chapter 5. We know that anyone born of God does not continue to sin. The one who was born of God keeps them safe, and the evil one cannot harm them. We know that we are children of God and that the whole world is under the control of the evil one, the devil. We know also that the Son of God, Jesus, has come and has given us understanding so that we may know him who is true, Jesus. And we are in him who is true by being his Son, Jesus Christ, What you're talking about. God our Father, of course. He is the true God and eternal life. Dear children, keep yourselves from idols. And that's where we end with chapter 5. I have no doubt whatsoever in my mind, not one little mustard seed of doubt, that God and Jesus are real and there is a heaven and a hell. Believe me. Yeah, I have no doubt. Our psalm today is Psalm 124, and it is a song of ascents of David. Beautiful psalm of David. If the Lord had not been on our side, let Israel say, if the Lord had not been on our side when people attacked us, they would have swallowed us alive when their anger flared against us. The flood would have engulfed us. The torrent would have swept over us. The raging waters would have swept us away. Praise be to the Lord, who has not let us be torn by their teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the fowler's snare. The snare has been broken, and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And that was Psalm 124, a beautiful song of ascents of David. Let me just read verse 8 one more time. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. God is the maker of everything. He is your maker, whether you want to believe it or not. 
you want to don't want to believe it, that's totally your choice. But you will have a very rude awakening one day. I'm not even going to sugarcoat it. I'm just saying it. I know some people's going to get mad and they're not going to like it. But I don't really care. Because I do care. I don't care if it makes you mad. I care about trying to get your soul to Jesus, to get your soul saved. Because I don't want to see your soul perish and see you burning in hell for eternity. And when you're acting that way, you're also trying to lead others to your belief, to act like, to not believe in God, and their life will be an eternity in hell as well. And your life will be even worse for you leading people to that, to that way. So, yes, I don't care if it makes you mad if you believe that way. God does not want to see you perish. He does not want to see you in hell for eternity. He wants you to believe in Him. He wants you to love Him because He loves you. Whether you want to believe it or not, He loves you no matter what you have done. No matter what you have done, He loves you and you can be forgiven for it. All you have to do is mean it and ask. None of us are perfect, and God knows that. He's just waiting on you to come to Him. Just waiting. God's got nothing but time. He's got all the time He wants. But you don't. You don't know when your time is up. You could die tonight in your sleep. You could have a heart attack in your sleep. You never know what could happen, trust me. I know. I've been through experiences, and I've seen other family and other people go through experiences. You cannot promise yourself a tomorrow. Say, oh, well, well i got enough time. Maybe I'll do it tomorrow, or I'll do it when I get old and on my deathbed. That makes me madder than anything anybody ever says. And my sister says it, too. And I've got three sisters. None of them believe in God. And my sister says, I'll ask forgiveness on my deathbed, and then I won't have to worry about it. I can do whatever I want right now. I said, you don't know if you're going to have a deathbed. Not everybody has a deathbed. You could go out there on the road and get hit and killed any single day. Somebody could come in and just shoot you in the head. You never know what's going to happen to you. But some people just won't listen. They think there's always going to be a tomorrow. Tomorrow is not promised. I just want you to know that. Trust me on that. It is not promised. I about lost four members of my family in one night. This was something that happened all of a sudden. We ended up losing one. God saved the others. Because believe me, I was praying and had others praying, and God spared their lives. And the ones left behind, so many people are hurt. Not just our family, but that person's family as well on their side. That will hurt for the rest of their lives because of stuff that happened that night. So believe me when I tell you, you don't know if there's going to be a tomorrow. We're going to end our Bible reading today with Proverbs. Chapter 29, verses 5 through verse 8. And I'm just going to go ahead and read them all together. Those who flatter their neighbors are spreading nets for their feet. Evildoers are snared by their own sin, but the righteous shout for joy and are glad. The righteous care about justice for the poor. 
but the wicked have no such concern. Mockers stir up a city, but the wise turn away anger. Okay, guys, that was our Bible reading for today. I'm sorry I went on and on and on there for a while. I just, I just feel like it needed to be said. Sometimes I get that and stuff in my head like that, and I just got to get it out. I feel like God's telling me to get it out, to say it, that somebody needs to hear it. And I get it out. <laughs> so, it's actually not one of the longest videos I've made, I see. So, hopefully it's not too bad for you guys. I hope you guys have a great rest of your night. Let's bring those souls to Jesus, and God willing, I'll see you guys all again tomorrow with another Bible reading. Bye, guys. God bless.